Well, I think when the, when we're in periods of time where inflation is high, um, bond markets are are not a place for performance either. And then we take a look at housing, right? So anyone who's looking to either downsize, move, look for employment in a different area, it's definitely not the time that they want to go out and get any mortgage um, when they're looking at rates alone. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, it's Friday just before... Memorial Day weekend, the official start of summer, although the official start of summer in Florida is, it doesn't have an official start. It's always summer here. It's just hot and hotter. So uh, our good friend Mindy McIntosh is with us and now, and Mindy, welcome back. So the first thing that popped out, well, I guess we should talk about consumer sentiment, but before we do that, the VIX, all right? When you see the VIX enter a period of complacency or maybe indifference, like nobody's trading it, it's just staying at a low level, you know, nothing's happening. Doesn't that give you a pause for thought? Absolutely a pause. It's like, here's the calm uh, before the storm and, you know, something's going to happen. But here's where we just kind of see a slower, calming period of time, which really, in all honesty, Carolyn, it's the time that I tell folks that we need to start establishing a plan. So, you know, here we really make sure that folks have, that's the kind of the first step, make sure you have a well-diversified plan. So what are you doing today inside of your investment portfolio? And how are we looking at things such as volatility and risk, NVIDIA, and all of these different pieces to the puzzle to make sure that you don't have too much in any one given allocation and making sure that we're here to walk you through that. Because it didn't definitely in that period of time where it's like, oh my goodness, we're at around 12 and we know what that means when history repeats itself or just kind of something is brewing and coming up. All right. So now combine that with the uh, consumer sentiment report in May, which uh, fell further the Michigan uh, University of Michigan's consumer sentiment index, you know, uh, falling 8.1 points uh, month over month. Um, you know, maybe uh, the consumers know something we don't. Well, I think when the, when we're in periods of time where inflation is high, um, bond markets are, are not a place for performance either. And then we take a look at housing, right? So anyone who's looking to either downsize, move, look for employment in a different area, it's definitely not the time that they want to go out and get any mortgage um, when they're looking at rates alone. And then how do they hedge those when you're looking at, you know, what does wealth instruments look like for them? And they might be looking at, you know, short term CDs right now are definitely outperforming long term. When we take a look overall in the market. I mean, gosh, how long are they going to continue to say you can earn five plus in a, in a six month CD? And yet, how do we look at the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road? So we have to be super careful of what staple items, where folks are still spending their money, how we want to actually influence this and really what the feds are going to do and when we see the rates are going to be cut. So we got to make sure that we're well, we're well looking ahead. We're making sure that we're not spending too much money in any one given area. We here even have a process and we look at that with folks to say, where should we be weaning a little thin? And what should we be diving into even from our investment standpoint? You have a few extra bucks, where should we be? And not too heavily weighted in one sector. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting because uh, that indicator is pretty, uh, pretty consistent, isn't it? Very. Yeah. And the indicators just show that we don't want people to run fearful, but we know that something is coming. So they have to make sure that they have their investment and even their healthcare philosophy set in place, especially for, we work with a lot of people that are in or nearing retirement, it's kind of our specialty here and really helping people focus on retirement made clear. So you think of that, if they're getting ready to retire for a time to retire, and we see those VIX at 12, you know, we don't want them running scared, but we need to have the appropriate plan for what, how are they going to instill income to not all living in retirement? And what things should we be doing looking at in the short term versus the long term? And then how do we set that around their goals of what they might want to do throughout their retirement years? 
it really is a time, a pivotal time point that we have to look at all these indicators. Yeah. Yep. Couldn't agree with you more. And, uh, you know, the, nobody's talking about a soft landing anymore. You know, you, you don't hear much. Nobody's saying inflation's transitory. Now we find out it's not transitory, it's sticky, right? And uh, maybe it's semi-permanent at this point. So, you know, it looks like uh, the meme makers out there at the Fed and uh, in Treasury, they're kind of losing their grip on things. Absolutely. And, you know, those are those are things, too, that we need to look at. When we take a look at even just the rise in inflation, you're talking about interest rates, the Fed's holding to cut rates. You take a look at even our national debt um, and what we're looking at there. And I think some folks don't even realize how cheerful we need to be about legislative risk um, and taxation later in life, even when we take a look at portfolio. So we're always taking a look at folks and look at even the taxable standpoint as a nation, how are we going to cut rates and where are we going to have our, our um, taxpayer dollars spent and make sure you're preparing for that as you're getting ready for retirement. Tax-free is the envelope to go in and there's just different ways we could help you to make sure the consumers are holding on to as much of their dollars as they can. Mm -hmm. Hey. So, so what's your take on uh, with what's happening in the banking sector now? Well, we're seeing a lot of mergers, acquisitions. Um, banking is really taking it overall, especially here in Michigan, with you know how how much we're seeing transitory there and transitioning. And I think that we have to really take a look. That obviously we're seeing CD rates, um, banking rates, what's happening, what are new folks moving into the area. So I think some folks who just have some cash on hand. Why not get into a, a six month CD? But on the flip side, we should be using treasuries and they don't have the state tax here in Michigan um, to be able to be doing that. So there's little nuggets that, you know, we can be making sure that we're using treasuries instead of CDs. And as we take a look at the bank, some people aren't real comfortable in feeling that their money is going to be super safe sitting there. And when we talk about the stick ratio, people want funds in cash. How can they readily utilize them? Um, so I feel like it, the banking in industry has definitely transitioned from where it used to be to where it is today. You know, so I definitely agree that it's something that consumers have really been taking a look at. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, uh, you know, I guess it all depends where you are in your point in life, whether you're uh, getting ready to retire, whether you've got 30, 40 more years before you have to retire all that stuff. So there's no like cookie cutter answer here, but certainly uh, caution is the byword, huh? Definitely caution. We need to be careful that people have a well thought out plan, seek out help with that and what they should do next. So that way we know life changes. We know there's change coming, but we want to make sure you're not hit with that surprise uh, because you're, you're definitely right here. I don't think we're going to see a soft landing here. So you need to be prepared and make sure that we're working together to walk through this and navigate on how you should be set up so that you don't have that that big huge surprise. Because some people like surprises on birthdays outside of that. We want to make sure we have a well thought out plan. <laughs> hey, the, uh, the one thing that gives me a little solace is, you know, the old saying that uh, uh, economists have predicted five out of the last two recessions, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So when we take a look at that, it does help. I mean, I think that as long as we can look ahead, look at these indicators, right? We need to look at unemployment rates and what's happening in consumer staples. So these are all indicators that do help us to look ahead to make sure that we are well prepared to know what has happened in the past, where are we at currently, what do we see coming? Because we're definitely in a different um, train point in a different world that we than what we ever have been, in my opinion as we look at rates and interest rates and really this inflationary period of time. Yeah. Hey, so what's your take on uh, cutting rates? Uh, are we going to see it? Are they going to hold off to the last possible moment? What are they going to do? I feel like they have to hold the last possible moment. I'm not sure what we're going to exactly see with rates, but I don't feel that we're going to see, you know, oh, we're going to actually see events cut rates, housing numbers go back to where they should, interest rates make some changes and transitions. I think we're going to wait till the last possible moment they need to do so. And I don't think that what folks are expecting to see for the level playing field leveling back out, we might have, you know, be in a period of time where that bar got set a little bit different. And this might be somewhat more of the new norm, uh, at least from what I've been seeing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a little scary. Well, one thing though, the unemployment numbers have held up pretty well. They're up in some states, down in others. Uh, 
you know, generally it's all in the revisions, right? Isn't that right? Yes. It's in the revisions and how they're going to uh, uncover that and watch that. I mean, we definitely need to see, there's periods of time where you see, okay, we need more folks purchasing homes and selling and moving into new areas. But when we take a look at unemployment, those numbers look good. Um, people are still going out. The consumer staples are fine. We're still seeing people traveling. So that's why I think sometimes we're going to see a hold on this. Now, Eventually, is it going to need to happen and make some changes, see some, you know, we really needed to see a period of time where inflation um, and interest rates and, and bond prices are all kind of on this teeter-totter. Well, we'll see that leverage out at some point. I just, I think they're going to hold off a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one thing uh, I learned over the years is that, you know, what's happening in the economy is always important, but sometimes the flow of funds coming in from uh, the rest of the world is really more important. And we see like the flow of funds going into China is stopped, gone. Like nobody's putting money in there. They're getting the heck out. Um, so a lot of flight capital from China as well as other parts of the world are, are coming here, right? Yeah, I mean, so that's nice. If we can keep it in the States, we've definitely seen that. The, um, the trade, we're continuing to see that more and more inside the U.S., which is helpful. It does help our economy, which means that why would they need to change some of the additional items? They've already done that. They pivotally changed some exterior barriers, um, which I mean, I think is going to just continue to try to help the consumer staple here. And then how do we actually look at that for revenues down the road and how feds are going to handle this? And just globally, where are we seeing that? So I just still say be cautious and look ahead. Make sure you're looking inside these accounts and really watching what's up and coming. Okay. So, so the question is, you're, look, I don't know your family situation, but let's say you're talking to your mother who's 80. What are you telling your or 75 to 80? What are you telling her to do? Well, we definitely want to make sure that we're transitioning into being well diversified. So our folks already are, meaning that we don't want to just say, oh, everybody go to NVIDIA because that's important. And everyone want to be an AI and tech stock. So that is definitely a position to have a portion of your portfolio. But as we age, we need to be more and more well rounded I also would say we don't want to be directly in the bond index right now, not a spot to be. So wrong time period of COVID. We have bond alternatives in the portfolios to help perform where the bond index is and where it should be. So what would I tell my grandmother? It is not a buy and hold strategy. It is making sure we have a solid income plan. So especially for their age, looking out for things like long-term care and having a solid income plan, which means navigating their investment portion of the portfolio and optimizing that is key. So we definitely don't want to ignore it. Um, we don't want to run scared though either and just make sure you're talking to your family members and your advisor to make sure you're set up for success. All right. Uh, I think we got a good uh, insight into things. I think we'll let it go at that. Mindy, just tell us where do we find you on the web? How do we connect with you? So in order to connect with us, please go to wealthmichigan.com. Um, some of you might be interested in our toolkit and our new book titled Cultivate Wealth. It can talk to you about some of these things that we are seeing currently in the market. Um, and so we'd be happy to help you there. So wealthmichigan.com or Macintosh and Associates. All right. Excellent. And of course, the link is in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. When you go there, please sign up for your free newsletter. Mindy, it's always a pleasure. And uh, Hey, we'll try to put the link in to get your uh, toolkit as well. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Carrie. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.